whatever you enjoy, your personal freedoms, they got to regulate, got to get involved. And they'll find some researcher at some far left uh, university who's going to come up with research that justifies their decision. But at the end of the day, it's all about limiting choice, limiting, restricting people, Americans from having liberties and freedom. Let me decide what I want to eat. If I want to eat, look, they're, I know people that are vegetarians, vegans, you know, they, they, they eat nuts and, 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 and they're healthy. So they say they always seem to be sick, but they claim they're healthy. But that's your lifestyle choice. You decide for yourself. I, I got it. And if you are a diabetic and you have to limit certain intakes, I understand that's good health care. But who the hell are they to say, don't eat red meat? Yeah. Because cows fart and they're uh, you know, creating uh, atmospheric changes that cause global warming. Welcome back to Safety Matters. This is Russ Kenzier, joined by my co-host, Sean Joseph. Look at you, Mr. Bling, bling, da bling, da bling. You, you are know bling me. I'm out, not one bro. for logos, but I just I mean, couldn't help you myself you are a today. walking ad. Oh, you know what? And I'm feeling a little bit... Listen, Russ. Wow, a little risque? I'm feeling just a little bit dicey. It's are such you a really? comfortable sh- Oh, you know what? It's a nice shirt. Where'd you get this? Is that from Walmart? Oh. Where'd you, you get what? that at? I'll tell you what. I'll let you tell the audience where I got it from, but Russ was super kind. He gifted me my first official safe new shirt. Um, hey, I, I have zero desire. I care. What's that? I care. I mean, you, you know, you, you do wear, care. You got to wear something. Not only this, guess what? I sipped my coffee today out of my safe news coffee mug. It's a great mug. Like, I have zero interest to share this opinion if I don't actually feel it in my heart, but I love wearing this hat. It's a great fit, it's high quality. And this shirt fits nice and stuff. I mean, look at these muscles. Anyways, this is a great shirt, Russ. Yeah, I was going to say, um, let's look at those muscles. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was, no. Really and truly, though, high quality shirt. Enjoy it. It fits comfortably. Um, and Russ will have details on where Details to, to follow. Absolutely. All right, we've got a big show today, so let's kind of jump right into it. This is a story published by Fox News Health came out uh, this week, 21st. Did you know, Sean, that your diabetes risk may double if you eat this food twice a week, says Harvard researchers. A new study followed the health and diets of over 216,000 adults over the age of 30. So what is the mystery food that if you eat it, your risk of diabetes goes through the roof? I have no idea. Uh, I'll just take a guess and say it's broccoli. Oh no, no, no! What's the risk? What's the what what are you going to get if you eat too much of this? You're going to get you're going to get diabetes. But what is? You think broccoli causes diabetes? Oh, pizza! (sighs) You didn't say pizza, did you? Cookies. All right, man. This is cookies. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess that's true. (laughs) Sugar. I don't know. I couldn't help myself. Uh, No, it wasn't uh, any of the above. It's uh, meat. It's meat. That's devastating you to me. eat just two servings of red meat per week can increase the risk of developing type two diabetes. A new study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, which of course I don't know if you got your uh, your issue this month, um, revealed swapping the red meat for plant based protein by comparison was linked to a reduced diabetes risk. The study found. Researchers from Harvard uh, T.H. Chan School of Public Health analyzed more than 30 years of health data and dietary choices of 216,695 participants. And here's what they found. Around 22,000 of them developed type 2 diabetes, according to a press release from the university. Those who consumed the highest amount of red meat were 62% more likely to develop type 2 diabetes compared to those who ate the least amount. So, um, uh, you buying this? You buying a red meat story? Is red red meat going to increase your risk of diabetes? You in on that? I'm semi-buying it. I've heard enough reports now where there has to be something with red meat. I'm just devastated because I love red meat. I don't know about you. And so does she. Look at her eat the red meat. But she's going to get 62% elevated chance of getting diabetes. Now, the question I ask, who were these people? 
male, right, female. Yeah. What were their ages? I mean, when you get my age, you have an elevated risk of diabetes <sighs> by eating us. Nothing. That's why we're here. Huh? I mean, I could, I, I can, I can eat, you know, everything right and not get any reduced risk because of my age. Mm-hmm. Meaning, older people have a greater chance of developing diabetes as, in fact, that's what they used to call type two diabetes is age related diabetes. Right? Mm. It was like, you know, it was a, old I people get it. All old people get diabetes, wow. but is it because they're eating red meat, Sean? What's the real reason? Okay. I mean, this young lady here, she looks like she's having a nice piece of a tenderloin or some type of uh, red meat. God, oh, by that, the way, Sean, so good. what so exactly tasty. is red nice, meat? Nice meat and red. Why don't you tell me what red meat is? That include pork, that's a great uh, question. I understand what is it is red meat. I understand it is beef or meat that comes from a cow. How about buffalo? Ah, uh, that's a great. I think that would be in the red meat category. I think that would be considered in the red meat category. Or bison. I think that would be the same. Well, they the studies Elk. found that not all red meats drove up the risk. Oh wow! Processed okay. meats did so more than unprocessed counterparts. For every daily serving of processed red meat, the diabetes risk increased by 46% compared to 24% for each serving of unprocessed meat. So go ahead and tell the audience, Sean, what exactly is processed meat? I don't have an answer for you. Russ, can you help me out here? So, I mean, I in terms of processed meats, it's... What does it mean to be processed? Like, do you put artificial preservatives? Did nugget? Yeah, that's chicken, right? Or you or you mash contents together? Or Do you think you that alter maybe it? maybe the study uses terminology that people don't understand for a reason? What Very possible because I'm Proc- I'm more processed. confused everybody. now. The more we read, the more confused I get. Everybody knows what <laughs> processed meat is. I, I when I hear processed meat, I'm thinking of like a Jersey Mike sandwich, or they salami, Deli bologna, meats. you know, ham that's cured. Yep, and meat that they kind of make. When they into, have to do a lot of this to yeah, slice it. Yeah, yeah, when they got exactly that's I I would imagine that's processed meat. Uh, the study said that our findings strongly support that limiting intake of red meat and instead choosing mainly plant sources of protein will help reduce an individual's risk of developing type 2 diabetes and its consequences, said first author Zhao Zhu. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, or Gu, a postdoctoral research fellow in the Department of Nutrition at Harvard in Boston, uh, stated in a statement to Fox News Digital. By comparison, Sean, by comparison, eating one serving of nuts or legumes reduced the risk of type 2 diabetes by 30%. So quickly tell the audience what a legume is um, so they know what they're supposed to be eating. I understand them as like peas, beans, like greens that are not leafy. Hold on, Charlie. I got to give you the. You, you did, just nailed it. I, I needed one because I've been on a cold you streak. So. You know, you have not had the. I'm not a complete doofus. Yeah, you, you nailed it. Nice. Um, yeah, they're beans. 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 Uh, Russ, beans for 20. What is the <laughs> red bean? Uh, here's the cool thing about this study. This, this is copied and pasted right off of Fox News' website. Check this out under underlined. Remember, they, they, they like to put studies within a study or stories within a story. So look what they put in this story. Depression identified as contributing cause of type 2 diabetes risk, says new study. Important findings. Oh, okay. That's quite a headline. Oh, that's interesting. So maybe it's depression that's causing the increase of diabetes. So did the study find people who were eating red meat that were suffering from depression? Mm -hmm. Did they separate or correlate the risk of depression to diabetes? I mean, right here in the Fox News story, under bold, all uppercase (laughs) print, underlined... Depression is a contributing cause. And well, that's kind of fascinating. Like, uh, yeah. so what am I reading here? And you see how the you see how the viewer yeah. can get so confused. Just reading headlines that are misleading, don't really they're not clear. Uh, what are we really talking about? Would some study from Harvard University, which right off the bat, that's a that's a that's a negatory. I mean, Harvard University. I mean, that's like the most. Is that like the most woke university in the world? I mean, yeah, we're woke, they're, they're and pretty we woke. do woke re- research. And according to our research, you know, if you're not woke, you have a greater chance of getting, you know, heart disease because woke people don't have heart disease. I mean, I, I'm being facetious, of course, but I, I just don't believe this crap. I mean, uh, you know, the story goes on. 
let, let us continue. As Ju Gu pointed out, that's Dr. Gu, uh, there are many different viewpoints about whether people should limit consumption of red meat. Now, 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 Sean, he mm -hmm. just got through telling us we need to limit our consumption. Yeah. But you know what he's saying now? Well, there's different viewpoints. Well, duh. Quote, we employed advanced methods to take into account possible errors in reporting dietary intake. And we controlled in detail for extraneous factors that might account for the findings, end quote. He told Fox News Digital, quote, our findings provide a greater level of certainty about this important relationship. So what exactly is Dr. Gu saying? I've never seen so many words. That's all words. That that's just word salad. Absolutely. I mean, read this. Uh, it goes on. Among people who consume the traditional Mediterranean diet, which limits red meat intake, quote, abundant evidence, end quote, has shown health benefits as Goo. Based on the study's findings, the researchers recommend limiting red meat consumption to no more than two servings per week and once would be better, Goo said. Don't mm -hmm. eat red meat. Yeah. Don't eat red meat because your risk of diabetes, which we're not telling you anything about the, the study, who was studied, actually goes up. And again, Sean, read the big, bold, upper case story within a story yeah. caffeine the wonder drug studies suggest more coffee could lower body fat and prevent type 2 diabetes you can't make this crap up mm -hmm. fox news is putting out a story about eating too much red meat raises diabetes levels and then literally within the story they put a second story or a third story talking about other things like caffeine depression yeah they all cause uh, your levels of uh, A1C or whatever uh, glucose sugar levels to go up as to increase the risk of diabetes. So what is one to think, Sean? Uh, nothing straightforward, unfortunately. And and as we went through this and unpacked it, right, it, you covered so many different aspects of how this can just get just really muddy. But here's where I get concerned, Russ. A lot of times now from friends – They'll be like, oh, well, did you hear this? Right? And, okay, oh, no. What? What's the situation? Well, according, or this is the situation. Oh, interesting. Well, what did the article say? Whenever you ask them, what do the article say? I hear a lot of, I'm not really sure. Or, or I forget. Sean, this is all deliberate. Yeah. The news media, I'm not picking on Fox News, they're no different than any of them. They're all about selling their channel. I mean, first first out with the headline is red meat causes people to get type 2 diabetes. I, I mean, you I, can I, literally go back and, and, and Google red meats, you know, and, and find thousands and dating back decades that talk about red meat being good for you, red meat being bad for you. I remember a study that was yeah, done yeah. that said if you eat, you know, red meat that's raw, yeah, raw red meat is uh, increases the risk of cancer. Then a study came out right after that um, that said if you cook the meat better, it reduces your risk of cancer. Yeah. So you sit there and go, well, well, at this rate, everything you eat, breathe, touch um, causes something, right? I mean, we're all going to die from something. Uh, but well, the, start, the story goes on. Quote, we would also suggest people replace red meat with healthy plant-based protein sources such as nuts and legumes, he continued. Now, let me throw down the bullshit flag. No effing way, Doc. Am I eating uh, nuts and, you know, red beans? Uh, dude, I want a steak. I want a steak. I want a steak. I'm going to eat some lamb chops. You know what? I can eat healthy lamb chops or, as you mentioned, bison, which is lower fat. But you think I'm going to throw down some nuts? Instead of a cheeseburger, I just like you're to take, out of your freaking mind. I just like to take a moment to let everyone know here that as my friends and I were growing up, Russ was kind enough to invite uh, all of us over to his house for amazing uh, beef tenderloin that he would cook us, and he would, you know, that's what that young woman was eating is a piece of my beef, beef tenderloin. Honestly, that's the photograph that she had. It had been to some steakhouses I really liked. Russ's beef tenderloin was absolutely amazing. It was an experience. That's it so right there, man. Check it, was, it out. <laughs> so I'm with you, Russ. Not only uh, do I get you wanting it, but hey, it, it's a joy when you serve it. And you inspired me so much to get good at creating my own. So we'll, we'll have another. Look, together, we're going to eat red yeah. meat. Uh, I understand everything you eat is good or bad for you. I get it. I get it. But yeah. here comes the bullshit flag like, yeah, Dr. Goo 
from Harvard said eating red meat's bad for you. So uh, he goes on, he goes on adopting this dietary strategy. Remember, remember, the dietary strategy is eat nuts and beans. This dietary strategy will help reduce individuals' risk of developing type 2 diabetes and its consequences, which will ultimately improve the health and well-being of people worldwide. Therefore, he said, adopting a dietary pattern with limited amounts of red meat intake is healthy and realistic. Now, I'm telling you, man, uh, this show is broadcast from Texas. <laughs> Damn right. We're meat eaters, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm proud of we, you, too. We like getting our calories from red meat. The redder, the better. Delicious. I mean, there's a, what is it? Uh, you go to Amarillo and they got the, the restaurant with the 64-ounce steak. Five freaking pounds of red meat. Served any way you like, preferably medium rare. Yeah. Uh, but I got another question for you, Sean. Another question. Yep. You ready? Yes. How many Americans have diabetes? Oof. 9 million, 17 million, 37 million, 52 million. C, 37 million. You don't seem real confident. I played some math. I was like, you know what? That's got to be a little over 10%. Um, it can't be as low as 17. It's just us to guess. It's just us you guessing. C. Yeah. 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 You, got it right. you got it right. Two for two today, baby. You do. You're, you're doing pretty good. That was a guess, though. You just it you was. admitted it was a <laughs> it guess. Was. <laughs> it was a guess. But I think not. about that. 37 million Americans have diabetes, right? Uh, how many have type 1 diabetes? How many have type 2 diabetes? How many people got diabetes when they got older? I mean, a lot of people, they reach 60, 70, they get diabetes. Look, the pancreas ain't working like it used to. Um, I don't know. How about genetics? Mm -hmm. How about mm -hmm. uh, pancreatic cancer? How about, uh, we can go on endlessly with, you know, how about, how about the consequences? You ready for this, Sean? Mm -hmm. How about this one? Eating too much nuts or legumes, can actually uh, cause uh, gastrointestinal problems. Yeah. And, I mean, Sean, you know what? Sean you I'm going to ask you a question. I want, your, I want a straight answer, okay? Yeah. When you eat lots of beans, what happens? I go to bed quietly and peacefully. Sean, what do beans create when you eat beans? They create a gaseous state. <sighs> so I've heard, not... Personally speaking, from experience, Doctor Gu <laughs> did not seem to mind right. that his prescription for a healthy uh, diet meal plan would produce tremendous amounts of very flagellant <laughs> gas. Agreed. Right. Yes. Yes. Agreed. And also, as you were laying that out, thank you because again, the article is misleading. As we looked into it. To me, right, it didn't really have any real information. And on top yeah. of that, the conclusion is X leads to Y, Y is diabetes. But the reality yeah. is, as you look at diabetes diagnosis, far greater and more significant factors contribute to the likelihood. There's so many different unique items that you eat in a week. To single out red meat consumption is just. Are you I don't saying know. there's a conspiracy? It kind of like is that as I really here? connect. Like, what is? Am the, I reading between the lines what is here, the witch Sean? Hunt? Like, what is the witch hunt? Like, is it, are we trying to? Is witch it like hunt. maybe protect yeah. the animals? Trying to um, maintain the population of ca of cow? Like, what's actually going on? All right, I I think he's got a, a financial investment in the bean industry. <laughs> I think Doctor Goo is tied in with the nut industry. Um, he owns nut orchards. Mm. Uh, I mean. I don't quite get it. Um, if you look at the numbers, I mean, when you, and you did guess the number right, 37 million. 11.3% of the U.S. population has diabetes. Okay. A lot of people have diabetes. Yeah, I got good, it. And it's not a good thing. I'm not, I'm not don't get me wrong. I'm not like, oh, this is really okay. Don't worry about it. I'm just not tying the link together. I, I'm just, mm -hmm. I, I think the conclusion from the Harvard Medical School is uh, full of crap. I just don't buy it. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know his agenda. Uh, and, but and we do know say we it, do right. know one thing, Sean. Right. There is an agenda. Let me, let me show you what the agenda is. This is from uh, Healthline.com. This is the trusted source. Uh, does red meat have health benefits? A look at the science. And they go on and uh, they have a section called the bottom line. The bottom line, Sean, says scientists have linked some varieties of red meat to chronic conditions like heart disease and cancer. Note they omitted diabetes, but red meat also contains key nutrients like protein, vitamin B12, and zinc. So we look at the nutritional value. This is the other side of the coin. Mm. 
Okay, so you have a risk, increased risk, I guess, according to Dr. Gu, of getting diabetes. But here's the health benefits. Red meat contains several important nutri nutrients, including protein, vitamin B12, and zinc, for example. Uh, four ounces, or 113 grams, of 80% lean ground beef provides, look at what it provides, calories, protein, fat, carbohydrates. But just check this crap out. This is from the um, healthline.com. Look at what they source. They source... Number, footnote three, trusted source. <laughs> well, who the hell is a trusted source? Yeah. That's, so, that's a, okay, word, trust, us, trust us. Ground beef is good. It has protein, niacin, zinc, iron. I mean, I, look, I, I got to assume this is all good stuff, right? You eat a burger, it's got all this good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So it, it goes on. This is uh, this is the, the internet for you, Sean. Yeah. Thank God, you know... Um, El Gore invented the internet, and what would we have done without him? The protein in beef is complete, meaning it contains all the essential amino acids that humans must get from food. Your body needs protein, Sean, to make muscle and tissue growth and maintenance, says trusted source. Beef is also a great source of vitamin B12, a water-soluble nutrient, necessary for nervous system functioning, and zinc, a mineral that's vital for the immune system. Trusted source. On the other hand, red meat is high in saturated fat. Though research shows that saturated fat does not directly increase the risk of heart disease, which I would have to say is total bullshit. Because that's what I hear all the time. Mm -hmm. The more fat you eat, the more cholesterol, right, increases the risk of heart disease. Is that what we're always told? You have a fatty diet. Yep. Okay, it's so, so, yeah, so point. much for the research from the past. Mm -hmm. But it goes on. The research shows that saturated fat does not directly, directly increase the risk of heart disease. It can increase LDL, bad cholesterol, bad, bad cholesterol, which is a risk factor for heart disease, says who, Sean? Trusted source, trusted source. They actually put trusted source in there. Trusted source. Jeez, trusted that's source. so weird. Yeah, trusted right. source. Trust us. Trust yeah. us. We yeah. have a source that's trustworthy. That's a super awkward to write. That's yeah. our trusted source. <laughs> Additionally, highly processed meats like bacon and sausage. God, There's so a yummy. processed meat for you, Sean. Have yeah. a more notably different nutritional profile than less process, processed cuts of meat. In particular, they're often very high in salt and contain other preservatives, says the trusted source number nine. Here's, here's a X factor question for you. It talked so much about... Um, the nature of this protein, red meat, right? And instead choose more plant-based proteins. But what if this beef was fed a grass-fed diet? Well, there you go. Which is a big there you emphasis go. What, what for did a the lot cow of farmers. Eat? The cow eat. Because ultimately when you're eating the cow, you're eating their diet. Yeah. The cow ate grass or hay or straw or some grain or feed that was provided to them. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but a lot of breweries, when they're done making beer, they'll have leftover grains from the mash. And the farmers will come and feed it to their animals. So they're in a little bit of a little bit of beer waste, so to speak, which okay. And what <laughs> goes better that. with a steak than a beer? <laughs> I, you know? Fair point. Fair All right. Point. So get this stuff. It goes on. Excess sodium intake can be associated with the risk of high blood pressure and heart disease, especially for young pe or for people who are more sensitive to the effects of salt. Says who, Sean? Yeah. Trusted source number 10. The way that meat is raised can also slightly affect its nutritional composition. For example, you just brought this up, Sean. Grass-fed beef is typically lower in total fat and saturated fat and higher in omega-3 fatty red, acids. It's still red beef or red meat. It's still a red meat. Mm -hmm. However, these differences are relatively small, says who, Sean? Right. Trusted source. The trusted sources, Sean. I mean, you got to trust these sources. Um, you're going to love this because I kept doing some research. I couldn't get off of this stuff. I, I, I couldn't find who the hell these trusted sources are. And then I found one. You ready for this? And it, I thought it was a trusted source. Who? Cool. Cleveland Clinic. You ever heard of them? Uh, pretty big. Are, are they similar to the Mayo? Yeah. Yeah, Mayo. Uh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, they're a pretty big outfit. This yep. goes back to 2020. I dug it up. Cleveland Clinic did a research paper in their nutrition section of their website, and it asked the question, is red meat bad for you? Fair question. 
what to consider and no. So there's the there's the hypothetical. I question. like the start. It didn't say what it is. Right. It's like it is red meat bad for you. What to consider and what to know. So that's the headline. Yeah, is red meat bad for you? Okay, what's the, what set forth the the premise? So here's what they concluded. They concluded that well, why is it that red meat is bad for you? And according to the Cleveland Clinic, they said, from health complications to how it impacts the environment, here are four reasons why you need to cut back on red meat. You ready for this, Sean? Yeah. Number one, potentially cancer-causing. Got it? Number two, cardiovascular health. These are kind of (laughs) open-ended statements. Cardiovascular health is the number one killer in the world. Remember the question, is red meat bad for you? Jeez. Look at what number three is, high cost. Well, what does cost have to do with... Is red meat bad for you? Right. High cost. Okay. And wait for it, Sean. Number four, the reason why red meat is bad for you is the environment. Mm. We got to save the planet. Raising cattle, Sean, Mm. increases Mm. significantly. Impacts the environment. More than 30% of grains grown in the world are fed to cattle. Cattle themselves produce significant amounts of greenhouse gases. That's code for cows fart a lot. Okay. Now we're getting Understood. Mm-hmm. Got it. So yeah. uh, it's cows feeding cows grains. They create greenhouse gases. Cutting back on meat consumption is not only healthy for you, but it's also healthy, Sean, for the environment. Yeah. Reducing meat consumption will help keep our planet healthy for future generations. Okay. So remember what the question was. Remember what the question was. Right. Is eating. Uh, is red, red meat, meat bad, bad for, you? for you? Right. And they concluded it's bad for the planet. Mm-hmm. And cows eat grains and cows fart a lot and they create greenhouse gases. And therefore, in order to save the planet, we're not interested in saving you. That's what they're really saying. We don't give a rat's ass if you get cancer. What? Whatever. Uh, we got to save this freaking planet. You're dispensable, Sean. Have a nice day. Adios. Uh, Enjoy your uh, filet because, uh, you know, we're going to take it away from you. I think that's what it's about. I think this is an agenda. No, they will not. No question about it. That is all about... All about saving the planet, and uh, but that was a trusted source, trusted source. So, um, you know what? People have been eating red meat since the dawn of it's time. It's been a staple. For we're carnivores. Absolutely. I wonder if Doctor Goo knew that we're carnivores. We're not omnivores. And it's a staple for building muscle, right? Stature, like it, it's a, yeah. it has an essential place in our food pyramid and a healthy balance. Yeah, you diet. tell you tell the defensive lineman on the Dallas Cowboys, dude, you're going to be eating nuts and beans. Or the policemen that protect you if they're eating yeah, all nuts right, and veggies. Right. Like, you know, I'm yeah. not... U.S. Not military. To- hey, you know what? Guys, we've got a new new diet. You're eating uh, beans and rice and none of that red meat crap because we're trying to save the world from you, global warming. You know, and you know what? Uh, I think that's just a pile of crap. I think, I think it's all a ruse. I think Harvard University, Cleveland Clinic, I think they're all buying into the global warming... People, the campaign to save the world. And you know what? Liberals, Sean, what liberals love more than anything. They love controlling people. Mm. Let's tell you what you can eat, how you eat, where you eat, if you can eat, what you eat, how much of it you can eat. Um, And we know better than you because uh, beans are good. You know what? Um, I don't think a lot of... I don't think a lot of people think that beans are that good. You know, there's kind of a, you know, if you put beans in like, you know, in like a chili or something or like, uh, you know, eating, you know, Tex-Mex and you have some frijoles. Oh, yeah. Got it. But if I eat them just purely frijoles, come on, yeah. man, cut the bullshit. Yeah. So I think it's uh, propaganda. Sorry. I think that the research about red meat is full of crap. It's time to go out and, and I appreciate your comments, your compliments about the, uh, the tenderloin I did. And it's amazing oh you remembered that. That, oh. that goes back, what, like 15 years ago? <laughs> That's like, a, how could I forget? It was, oh, it was I, amazing. Frankly, I forgot. So you, you refresh my memory. Oh, it you was know? amazing. Amazing. So you like the tenderloin, huh? I loved it. Yeah. And and just so everyone knows, like it, everything about it, all the details. And then, you know, he, he, would, he would cut it fresh, right, ready to go in front of all of us. It was a big event that we all looked forward to, but evidently for us, it was just Tuesday. Uh, but for us, it was another day mi- in the world of red meat. <laughs> Cheers. And we had a great time. So absolutely. Well, I appreciate the compliment, Sean. So uh, that brings us 
this uh, episode to a close about red meat and uh, causing whatever. I mean, fill in the blanks. It causes cancer, it causes sterility, it causes high blood pressure, it causes, causes, causes. And uh, the real takeaway is you sit there and I question all research. I just don't buy it because there's an agenda. And you sit there and go, that's that's what the hell Harvard University is spending their valuable resources on is studying the effects of red meat on, on diabetes, even though they never concluded anything. All the study, read it concluded nothing okay and it was promoting the whole study was don't eat red meat eat beans and nuts that was that was the takeaway don't eat red meat because it's going to destroy the planet eat beans and nuts great so let's go out for uh you know we're going to go watch a watch the cowboys play this weekend and uh you know just bring the cashews you bring the walnuts and we'll just have a great time uh but no meat involved so um anyhow sean Anything you'd like to say as we close out? That was my sentiment, which was it just some it's just disheartening, Russ, because sometimes it feels like we cover these topics and it feels like at the core of all this, it's like somebody is trying to agenda, right? Somebody's trying to sell something in some kind of way. And we've got to go through roundabout means to figure out what could it actually truly be about. And it's unfortunate that the news that's supposed to inform us and empower us, we actually have to do a lot more research to find our own truth, right, and present facts than, you know, the people who get paid to do this on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean, what do they call it in the social media? I mean, misinformation. Mm -hmm. Government needs to come in and tell Twitter, you you know, you need to you need to block those sites that are providing misinformation. Well, guess what? Misinformation is everywhere. Yeah. I mean, Harvard Every University is publishing. There you go. Misinformation 24 seven. And all we did, all I did is take the news story, dissect it, just pull it apart. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because when you just read the story, it kind of makes sense. Like, oh, hey, don't eat too much red meat, honey. It's going to increase your risk of diabetes. But when you really pull it apart, kind of like pulled pork. Is that red meat? Pulled pork? I love pulled pork. Uh, When you pull it apart, um, you know, when you you fillet the story... (laughs) You find out... I got to eat. (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, You find out that there's just, you know... Where's the beef, right. <laughs> as they would say? Uh, and, and the answer is there's no beef. And That's I don't know what Dr. Goo is or what the hell his job is at Harvard. But to me, it just diminishes Harvard. Yet again, our elite universities, our leading researchers uh, are just propagandists for some agenda. Don't know what it is. Obviously, they don't like red meat. Maybe it's an anti-Texan thing. I don't know. We hate Texas, so let's destroy the economy of Texas by, you know, not letting them. And because that's what I think the next logical step is. They're going to say, well, according to science, red meat causes an increased rate of fill in the blank, heart disease, diabetes, whatever. And therefore, we're going to we're going to prevent you from eating it because uh, we pay a lot of money. You know, health care is, oh, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, insurance costs, you know, and, and all you people eating this red meat, you're just driving up the cost. So what we're going to do is stop you, right, because government likes to pass laws that stops you yeah. from doing things yep. because we know better than you. So we're going to ban red meat. You can't buy red meat because it's bad for you, says Dr. Goo. And we're going to have to eat, what's that fake meat? They got that stuff they grow in a lab. Oh, um, <laughs> like the the Beyond Meat? Oh. God. Well, so that's a whole other conversation. Meat in, a, in a lab. Did you ever, I had it once. It was disgu- like kind of meat like, but yeah. would that be considered red meat? That's I mean, they basically question. grow meat in a lab. Because I think they actually start meat? with some of, yeah, the an actual cow and then basically like genetically re engineer a cow for consumption, which is like, there's this is a whole other conversation, but like I've thought about this as we talk about maintaining the planet. I love uh, red meat personally. Like I like the taste of true, like legit meat. But as we continue to go down this path. Well, that's why they want to take it away from you. Yeah. You, like, you see, anything you like, anything that's good that you enjoy, any, any. And I want the real thing. I don't want to get off on the, the far left thing here, but, you know, anything that people really enjoy in life, religion, family, food. Pick a subject. Man, they want shit. We got to stop that. No, none of that for you. It's whatever you enjoy, your personal freedoms, they got to regulate. Got to get involved. And they'll find some researcher at some far left uh, university who's going to come up with research that justifies their decision. But at the end of the day, it's all about limiting choice, limiting, restricting people, Americans from having liberties and freedom. Let me decide what I want to eat. If I want to eat, look, I know people that are vegetarians, vegans, you know. 
they 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 eat nuts and 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 they're healthy, so they say they always seem to be sick, but they claim they're healthy. But that's your lifestyle choice. You decide for yourself. I, I got it. And if you are a diabetic and you have to limit certain intakes, I understand that's good health care. But who the hell are they to say don't eat red meat? Yeah, because cows fart and they're uh, you know, creating uh, atmospheric changes that cause global warming. Uh, that, that that's the that's the key. Is that really what this is about? I mean, you you, you did the homework, you presented it, and. Really great point because this could have been an opportunity for one of our finest universities historically to present quality, rich research showing a clear conclusion, but it was anything but. Yeah. So if anything, right, it, it, for me personally, it leads me the opposite direction, which is I have less faith in maybe some of the leadership at some of these fine universities sure. now is really question, what are they doing? What's really Sean, going on behind the scenes? How we, does this stuff get printed? There you go. All we did, all we do, this whole show is just taking headlines Copying and pasting them, literally from, you know, news outlets, mainstream media. We just take the story they publish, absolutely, and we we just examine it. We kind of pull it apart and say, well, what do they mean by? Mm -hmm. We're not we're not manipulating anything. There's no editing. We're not changing anything. We're just we're just saying, well, what is Doctor Goo talking about? And what they always throw out is their pedigree credentials. Well, Doctor Goo is with Harvard University, so he's smarter than everybody else. Uh, but you sit there and go, what? Well, obviously, he's not because. Dr. Goo, uh, we're not eating nuts and beans. I mean, I yeah. like nuts. Don't misunderstand me. That's not a meal. That's yeah. a snack. That's like a handful watching a Cowboys game this week, right? <laughs> it's not like my meal. It's not going to work. That's yeah. what I, holds me over between, you know, the steak and the, yeah. the lamb chops yeah. uh, or the Whataburger. This is not a commercial for Whataburger. I, I do love say, Whataburger. I must say. Let me, yeah, let me put that out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyhow, man, I had to get that off my chest. Uh, anything you want to say before we close this one out? I'm really hungry. Uh, Russ, uh, let's make dinner reservations here at a steakhouse very soon. And uh, that's all I got. That's all I got tonight. All righty, Sean, Joseph, thanks for uh, for that uh, words of wisdom, steak wisdom, meat wisdom. Um, and so with that, this brings another episode of Safety Matters to a close on my on behalf of myself and Mr. Uh, Mr. Merch here. I mean, is anything else you can have that has safety news on it? I mean, you just, <sighs> dude, you're out of control. Check out that lug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. you know what? Next time I'm going to bring the mug. So y'all be ready. Come thirsty because we got more stuff for you. Yeah, bring the mug. Bring the mug, and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have some hamburgers or something. So, anyhow, with that, thanks for uh, joining us, everybody. Uh, until next time, uh, this is Russ and Sean asking you to uh, stay safe uh, and uh, don't buy the media hype uh, just because you read it read it in uh, in a legacy media source or a newspaper. Don't buy it if it comes out of a main uh, major university. Really question it uh, because there's a pretty good chance it's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, that's Seriously. all we got for you today. You guys take care. See you.